Good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to episode 38 of the Matt and Matt No Skill Trains podcast. I am one of your hosts, Matt Rochford, and with me, as always, are my buddies and my co-hosts. Co-hosts, please uh, sound off. Matt Zasuha. And Johnny Nugent. Uh, how are you guys doing tonight? We're doing good, man. We, I'm, I'm back. Hey, the, the New Yorker's back. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> It's yeah, not we, Chicago we, podcast anymore. Not darn. <laughs> we we did we did miss you, Matt, and uh, we're glad glad to have you back. I'm glad to be back. You know, I I listened to the interview with Scott. I listened to it twice already, and it was I I, I missed myself, but I really missed the the interview itself. That was a fantastic interview you guys did. I really wish I could have been there. We uh, we told a box story in your honor, man. That's I know. what we did. <laughs> that was I the best story it. about it. Is the box story. So that was a tribute to you. That's it. Hey, I, I, I had a smile from ear to ear when he was talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. So as always, you can uh, find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, YouTube, and Amazon Music. Now, I, I wanted to quickly mention our Discord server, which is now over 100 members and growing every day. Uh, it is a public Discord, so anyone can join, but you have to acknowledge that you read the rules since it is a community server, and that's a little different from private servers on Discord. Now, we have a great group of moderators who always make sure that folks are treated with respect, keep our community safe. Uh, there will be a link in the Discord uh, for the Discord in the show notes, and all you need to do is click it, and you will be added to the server, and you can introduce yourself and start chatting away. Now, if you've always wanted to have a Matt and Matt coffee mug when you wake up in the morning so you can stare at our logo, uh, that can be had because uh, we do have some merchandise. And uh, I will place that link in the show notes as well. And if you use our merch code, which is M-A-M-P-O-D, you will get 10% off. Now, thirdly, the Matt and Matt Skill Trains podcast is now part of the trains.com partner program. So if you do plan on buying from them, uh, please use our uh, affiliate link, which is uh, www.trains.com slash MMOP. Now, it'll look just like the normal trains.com website, uh, but because we're an affiliate, um, it does help out this podcast a lot, and uh, we would appreciate it if you could use that link when you buy things. It doesn't look any different. You're not charged anymore. It is, if you're just going to, if you're going to buy something on trains, you might as well use our link and help us out. So we would appreciate it. Uh, and we also have a unique promo code, which will give you $10 off a single purchase on the trains.com website. You can use this. It's only good for a single purchase. And that code again is MMOP. Uh, all this information will be in the show notes. Now let's get to tonight's episode topic. We're going to be talking and uh, chatting with Chris from the Chris's Trains and Things YouTube channel. Chris, welcome to the podcast. Hey guys, thanks for having me. It's uh, it's great to be here. Well, we appreciate you taking your time out to come on our humble podcast here. Uh, you've definitely been on our radar. Uh, we love your channel. We love your content uh, and uh, just everything you give back to the community. And, uh, you know, we, we really appreciate, you know, everything you do. And uh, for just, again, for just kind of coming on our podcast and chatting with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I mean, it's been great to listen to other modelers on the podcast and and see the, the community grow through the Discord server that you guys put together. And it's been a lot of fun. So I'm glad to be here and share my story a little bit for those that maybe haven't heard of me. Awesome. Well, uh, it, Matt or Johnny, do you guys have anything before we get started? No, I think we're good. Uh, just big thanks for coming on, Chris. Really uh, glad you're here. Yeah, thanks for, for joining us tonight, Chris. Chris is a, a big buddy of the Matt and Matt podcast, and he's been a great friend of ours for the, the past year. So it's just really, really humbling to have you here, dude. Thank you. Okay, well, let's get started. Uh, again, uh, I will uh, start off with asking Chris some interview questions, and then uh, I'll pass it over to uh, Matt Z or Johnny, and they can take their turn as well. And then we'll just kind of talk about the uh, industry as a whole. So uh, let's get started, Chris. Um, you know, my first question for everybody, uh, when and who got you started in model railroading? Sure. So that would be from my dad's side of the family, uh, which I think is probably a pretty common story. My uncle uh, at the time when I was probably four or five was living with my grandfather. And so he had a layout in the basement from when he was a kid that he had built up. And so I remember going 
to my grandfather's house and seeing that layout and always being just completely in awe of it. And I think I was probably four or five when my grandfather got me my first engine, which is a, was a Redding Lionel uh, steam engine that I still have. It's hanging in the office in our house now on a, a piece of, piece of a display shelving. And I did a video on it not too long ago. And I just remember just falling in love at that moment with, with trains. And so my dad had a set when he was younger. I've highlighted that briefly in a video uh, a couple months ago now. And so he was into it a little bit, but not nearly as much as my grandfather and my uncle were. And so every birthday and Christmas, I'd get another piece of rolling stock. And then eventually that grew into uh, an Amtrak set that I had gotten. And then some Pennsylvania bud cars that I have that I have not highlighted on the channel yet. And so that's really how it, how it all got started was my dad's side of the family, which is ironic because my mom's side of the family has more railroad blood than my dad's. But uh, that's where that's where it all started. And and then kind of, you know, it was just an infatuation through my childhood. Awesome. Yeah, it just it just takes one person, right? Just one person to be like the catalyst uh, to get you started in uh, in any kind of hobby, but especially in model railroading. And um, it could just take off from there. Absolutely. I mean, it's all about seeing the passion that, that someone else displays for something to, and as a, I think as a young child, it's so easy just to get connected with that. You know, you see someone that, that you look up to so passionate about something, you naturally want to be passionate about that as well. So that was a, it was a natural fit. Now you've had a YouTube channel for, I believe just over four years. What, yeah. um, so what made you decide to start a model railroad channel? And like, so what was your motivation behind that? No, that's a great question. I think for me, uh, I'm in the field of education. And so I, I thought when I got into this, when I got back into the hobby, let's say, cause I did fall out of it in, in late high school, college. And then I didn't come back into the hobby until about 2015. So we're talking seven years ago. I was about 26 at the time. And I, I had no idea what I was doing because everything had changed from the conventional trains that I had as a kid. So I went to YouTube and tried to figure out exactly how do I, how am I going to learn how this works? Um, I was kind of thrown back into the hobby by getting some great deals on some legacy equipment and some engines. And, and of course, you know, you search, uh, you know, O gauge trains on YouTube and you're going to come across Eric's trains channel. And, and so I watched a, pretty much every video he had posted, I think within a week's time, to just kind of get myself caught up on the hobby in, in just a matter of days. And it was great. And it was really helpful for me to build my first layout, but I made a lot of mistakes on that layout. And that's all part of the learning process. So when we purchased the house that we're in now, that would have been 2017. And we moved in in April and I had to finish the basement first. So finish the basement. And then in October of that year, I began working on the layout. And I think it was January is when I made my first video. And basically my thought was I had, fortunately, I had Eric to kind of help guide me through his videos of kind of what to do, but there wasn't a whole lot of instructional videos or how to's out there within the hobby, especially O gauge. I think you see a lot of like how to build an N gauge layout in 30 seconds, you know, like those time-lapse videos, but there wasn't a whole lot at the time that I could find for, for O gauge and O scale stuff. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and make my own videos and put them out there and just and just see if I can help others. And I think I mentioned that in my first video, which is just absolutely abysmal um, filming quality. I was using some old Nikon point and shoot instead of my phone. But I think I mentioned it's just like, you know, if I can help someone else in the hobby, someone else that's trying to get started, um, get a couple things right the first time uh, and, and lower their frustration level, then I've done my job. So that was the initial, um, you know, goal or impetus of the channel itself. And then it just kind of, it slowly grew a little bit here and there for a couple of years until just about um, February, March of 2021. It took off a little bit more just having connected with some others and, and just getting motivated to put more consistent content out there. And, and that's where we are today. Yeah. You, uh, at one point, dude, you, you, you just skyrocketed like, like crazy. It was, it was, it was great to see. Yeah, it was it was awesome to see. So like big congrats there. But yeah, you nice. um all of a sudden like you were just like your numbers were like just kind of multiplying like crazy. And uh that's that's great to see. Like in, in the model railroading uh social media uh land here, you know, it's it's great to pe see people being successful 
uh, with any kind of social media when it comes to um, O-Scale moderator rewarding because we certainly need it. Yeah, I think for me, I, I did the YouTube thing there for a while, and then there was quite a few dry spells. Um, I have a few other hobbies that kind of take my time away, and then obviously I have a family and a, a job, and then I've been in grad school and now doctoral program. So there's a lot of things that pull me away. And it's all about budgeting your time. But you know, if you look at my channel, you're going to see videos. It's Chris's trains and things, right? So we're going to highlight trains, but then, you know, there's going to be a video review of like a pizza oven, um, which making pizzas is another hobby of mine. I have a wood shop. That's another hobby. And then customizing my, my motorcycle. It's another hobby. So there's a lot of things that pull me in multi different directions. And so I think for a while there, my channel didn't really know where to fall within the YouTube algorithm. And, and so I I actually had more followers for quite some time on my Instagram because I could just come down to the basement, snap a photo and post that to Instagram. It was a lot easier than filming a video, editing the video and getting it uploaded. It would just seem like such a drag. So there was quite a few dry spells between the January of 2018 and, and March of 2021. And then I think this year I've just done my best to be as consistent as possible with the content that I've been putting out. And, and that's reflected in the, the subscribers that, that have joined along for the ride. Um, and, and I, I guess enjoy my content, which I can, I appreciate, you know, it's good to get feedback from people and, and that keeps me motivated to just continue to evolve the layout and change things and challenge my own styling and scenic techniques. So it's been great. Yeah. And if you are uh, new to Chris, please check him out. Um, if you search, if you're on your, if you're in YouTube, if you just search up Chris's trains and things, he'll pop up. Uh, we'll also make sure that his links uh, end up in the show notes as well. But please check out his channel because he has uh, great content. Um, I love your stories. Like I, I know you told the story about how you found your first big boy, mm-hmm. and uh, that was really intriguing. I loved I loved listening to that one. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you have great content, and please, folks, just please check out Chris's trains and things. Um, he uh, just uh, just great A plus content from him. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. It's all about just the stories. I mean, that's the English teacher in me. Um, you know, I think it's just about, it's all about bridging that connection. And and we live in a world where there's very little connection, especially having worked through the pandemic. And actually for my channel, I did not lean into the pandemic and working from home nearly as much as I probably should have. I don't, I did not put out much content in 2020, um, having just been able to come down to the basement and do work. I don't know why I made that choice but i did um but trying to just connect with people and and you can connect with people you know on a personal level and so i try to bring a little bit of personal stories and things like that into the content and into the design work and and kind of the vision that i have as i design the layout and do some scenery things and try to talk people through how you know i visualize this and and the steps that i get from a, a picture in my head to getting it um onto the layout the way that it ends up finally looking it's it's a process that for me that whole development stage takes weeks and sometimes years there'll be parts of my layout now that still don't have any scenery on them because i just haven't gotten the uh, motivation or um the inspiration for what i need that scene to look like to connect with everything else so it just will hang out as plywood planes for the time being until something hits me the right way but i i, I appreciate the getting on there and doing the live premieres with people and chatting and then trying to get a live stream in and just talking with people and answering questions and seeing what their thoughts are. And it's been a great way to connect with people that I didn't think I'd have just starting YouTube. I thought it would be more one way communication, but it's really started with the the live streams and the live premieres to be two way communication and really a way to connect with other people and, and now connecting with people at shows or hobby shops and things like that. It's just been absolutely fantastic. Now, speaking of scenery, uh, this is a good segue. Um, for an English teacher, you have one heck of a artistic eye for <laughs> creating scenes, dude. I'm not kidding. Like just creating these awesome scenes with ponds and fields and people and mountains and just it. I love to watch your stuff and your how tos and how to make stuff because it's it's fantastic looking. Like I'm I'm not even joking and I'm not trying to be like you know I know you're a guest on our show, but I'm being very serious when I say like your seat. Like even when you post photos up, um, it it looks fantastic uh, and it looks like you you definitely spend a lot of time trying to make things 
the way you envision them. Mm-hmm. And it, it really shows uh, when your work is completed. Thank you. No, I mean, it's been, you know, I mean, and I have my inspirations out there. So obviously Eric Siegel's, um, you know, how he does his mountains. Uh, I completely just stole his same design. Um, I've mentioned that in videos. I'll do my best to give credit where credit's due. I stole his his um, his way that he does mountain mountain work, and it's worked really well for me. Um, anybody that knows me knows that my goal um, is is to emulate Norm Charbonneau as much as possible. Um, I had the, the pleasure of meeting Norm over the summer this past year or in uh, September, and uh, it was great to get to talk with him. But I mean, Norm Norm's layout is just second to none, so it was great to have that opportunity to talk with him and. I watch a lot of his work and then try to emulate it. And fortunately, he and I can communicate back and forth now because we've, we've been able to meet. And so uh, I, I try to take a little bit of those pieces of inspiration and what I see in other layouts and then try to make it my own. Uh, but it's all, about, it's all about that artistic release. So for me, you know, in the, the job that I'm in now is stressful. Um, and so I see the layout as an opportunity on Friday nights. I'll just come down here and it's just a release. You know, it's a way for me to just come down. I can decompress and I can just, just develop an entire scene. And it's just a way for, for me to, to kind of get away from the work, uh, grind, uh, the stress from the week uh, and the emails that continue to pile up. And I can just kind of put myself in my own little world for a little bit and develop something that's unique and new and, and maybe it works and sometimes it doesn't work and, and we'll leave it there for a little while until I can decide to tear it down and rebuild. You know, if you follow my channel, I've, I've been doing a lot of renovating of prior scenes and that's only going to continue over the next year with some things that I've got coming in uh, that, you know, I, I purchased something, maybe built a kit, realized it didn't fit, didn't look as good as I wanted it to. So we're going to scrap it and we'll build something else and try again until we get it right. That's the beautiful thing about this hobby is, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks; just matters what you think. And uh, I, I truly enjoy the, just the the design process, probably almost as much, if not more, than running the trains themselves. I, I just enjoy creating those scenes, so I can get those those still shots that I can post on Instagram or the video content that we can get out there for people to see. And the the biggest compliment is when people just say, "I thought that was real." That's my goal every time I develop a scene: yeah. is for someone to say, "That looks real." I'll just cut in here real quick. And because you said that, that was my reaction. You posted a picture of your farm scene with the car. Yep. And I, honestly, if you wouldn't have told, if I would have known that was your layout, I would have thought that was a picture you took outside. That that scene just looks fantastic. Amazing work, dude. Thank you so much. You're yeah. Kind of, kind of hopping on, on that uh, scenery train here like chris we had the opportunity matt uh matt R and i had the opportunity to come visit your layout during york and it was absolutely stunning getting to see your work in person uh, the camera really doesn't do it justice um uh, you quite literally the bob ross of of scenes in o scale like there's times where i look at your videos and i look at your thumbnails and i'm i'm not sure if you're familiar with the uh gentleman luke towen uh the ho mm-hmm. side that guy's a master at scenery and sometimes I look at your videos and your thumbnails and your pictures and I have to second guess myself because I originally think it's a Luke Toen video, but it's, it's your work and I'm, I'm absolutely blown away. Um, definitely am inspired to work in my layout after seeing your, your work and your cinematography is, is second to none. So for those of you who have the chance to who have joined us on the Discord server, you, you've probably seen Chris's work and I, I can't wait to see what else you have in store, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Chris, Chris's layout does have a, hap- a lot of happy little trees so <laughs> yeah that's right yeah no and 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 yeah luke town's work is definitely one that i've i've delved into late night uh just perusing youtube trying to find some inspiration and just uh, absolutely i mean he's he's another one that that would be part of the inspiration process and how i've developed um, i guess an eye for what i want things to look like and then stealing techniques again i mean I, i've talk to some other buddies about you know when i finish this layout when i'm in between this one and tearing it down to build a new one is just doing some of those little mini scenes and i've toyed around with the idea of doing one of those end scale layouts in a day kind of thing to just just play around with and have fun and then auction it off or something you know i think that that the the work that you see on some other youtubers and people out there is just fantastic and that we have the opportunity to share it with people that want to watch it is is a joy so it's been fun i appreciate the comments guys thank you 
All right, Chris, the million dollar question. Although I yes. probably already know the answer to this. What is your favorite railroad and why? Yeah, that's a good question. And and it's it's not mentioned all that often, but my railroad is named the Pennsylvania and Pacific. And so uh, it would be between the Union Pacific and the Pensy, and I would have to go Pensy, uh, even though I, I don't have a whole lot of Pensy steam power. I also don't have a lot of UP steam power, but we're get, we'll get there. I have to go with Pennsylvania. I live in Pennsylvania. Um, so that's got to be just a natural fit there. It was going to be one of those. It's a close. UP is right behind the, the, the Pensy there, but I'm going to have to stay with Pennsylvania. <laughs> gotcha. What is your personal take on uh, the O scale model railroading industry for the next 10 years? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I think that it depends on it. It's so funny when you hear from certain people, I was in a, a hobby shop uh, not too long ago and there was an older gentleman in there and he was talking about how he was at York on Friday and it was dead. And this was last fall and I was at York on Friday and what was dead was the fact that there was a lot of dealers missing from the orange hall and, and th there were dealers missing from the orange hall for their own reasons. But I don't think that the the show itself was dead. There was a lot of people there and we had a lot of fun and met a lot of people. And, and you know, that gentleman ended up leaving. And I was talking to the shop owner and he was like, man, that guy would complain that the sky isn't blue if it was cloudy out. Um, you know, I think that, that the hobby is in a great place at this point in time. I think that the MTH closing is a bummer. I, I think, you know, closing in quotations there, you know, hand quotes, it's not actually closing, but I think that that threw a wrench in things and made people think, wow, okay, now we're just going to have Lionel, uh, and, and Atlas. And, but it's not the case. You know, we've got people that are excited about the hobby. The, the YouTube community has completely exploded. I think since about last June, I would love to see the metrics from Google on the amount of, a, of YouTube channels focused on this hobby just since last June. Because I feel like every day it's there's someone new posting content out there, and and that's great. You know, I love the fact that I don't. You know, it's not like it's competition. The more, the merrier. A, a phrase that I've used with others that do this is a rising tide raises all ships. So if we can have more people out there to promote it, that's wonderful, and more voices. So Lionel and Atlas and MTH will know what things people are wanting to buy and where we want this hobby to go. So I think we're in a great place. I think we're probably in a better place now than we were 15 years ago, to be honest. I think that there's going to be a huge turnover of, of post-war uh, engines here in the next 15 to 20 years. That's going to revitalize a, a conventional uh, era of, of running trains. And we're going to see a lot of, we'll call them retro uh, conventional trains coming back into the hobby. So I think you'll, the pendulum swings back and forth, but we're in a great place. The technology is unbelievable. You've got, HO manufacturers putting smoke units in, you know, really small engines, even I think there's some an end scale possibly. Uh, I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong on that. But so you think about the size of O scale, we're going to have some amazing, think about what the technology is going to look like in 10 years. I know there's been word of what, what's going to happen with vision line. Will it sunset and will they come out with something else? Will it continue? If, if they continue with vision line, what the technology is going to look like in 10 years is going to be staggering to, to continue to push the envelope. So I, I'm, I'm excited. I think we're in a great spot. I think the communities come together a lot more in the last 12 months. And, and so it's just going to make it stronger and, and more united and supportive of one another. So we're in a great place. That was a really roundabout way of getting to your answer. We're in a good place. No, that was a fantastic answer, actually. And I think the saying of, when one door closes, another one opens rings true for MTH because uh, even more so too, because they closed their front door and like five doors opened up. Yep. Uh, it was kind of crazy. And and I'm going to steal a little, a term from, from Johnny, uh, but I'm going to cite Johnny if that's okay. You better. I think the, the thing you said, Johnny, was that we're kind of in a, um, a no scale Renaissance. And I think that really rings true. Um, you know, in the last, I would say, and this was before COVID. Like, you know, when COVID came around, like everyone was kind of pushed indoors. And yeah, everyone's going to gravitate toward these indoor hobbies and stuff like that. But even before COVID hit, like with all the social media just surging with O scale in the last, I would say, four or five years, it has just put us in a really, really great place. 
And look, I mean, even with MTH closing and yeah, people picked up some people, you know, kind of went different directions and people took pieces of it. The old scale industry is moving on. Like, you know, uh, Lionel grabbed tooling, uh, Atlas, you know, pulled tooling from them. And then, of course, MTH is still doing some of their all of their custom stuff and they still have new stuff coming out, uh, coming out that are, that's just not, um, you know, custom uh, from hobby shops. They're just doing some of their own. Like, I think they have some steam engines coming in uh, late this year. So, yeah, I mean, it's we are in a we are in a great place uh, and I'm excited mm-hmm. to uh, definitely see where we go from here. Well, yeah, and I think just to, to take that one step further, too, is with the amount of people that we have in the hobby now and the, uh, this younger generation of people that I think I think, you know, if we go back to your first question, who got you in the trains? My dad and my grandfather did. So we historically see this hobby as a, a bunch of older guys that that run trains. I think if you go to a lot of clubs or shows, you'll see a lot of older guys that run trains. You and and this is again generalizing. You typically wouldn't see a bunch of twenty to forty year olds uh, in those groupings. And so now with YouTube, we've got kids that are in you know high school, middle school, and maybe even elementary school that are watching and say, "Hey, those guys aren't all that older than me," and they're they have these great layouts with these great collection, and, th- and that motivates them to cr- produce their own content because we know that we're in a generation of content producers more than even content consumers. And, and then what does that mean is that they're in the market to buy trains. And so those of us that are in the hobby are like, Hey, that's great. I can then sell the trains that maybe I don't run as much to them and then turn that around to buy something new. And then that opens the door for someone like me who has always just run Lionel now has some MTH to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to take the jump and buy a third rail engine, um, or I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and buy something that's brass or uh, more exclusive or expensive or more precise for whatever reason. Just because because I have the opportunity to do that now. So, if, like for me, uh, I if you asked me three years ago, are you going to buy a third rail engine? I would have laughed in your face. I might have asked you what a third rail engine was, uh, but it, it's just completely opened the doors and transformed the hobby to say, hey, now I've got these younger guys that are able to, because of the way things are, the way the market is and the industry is, we're able to now say, hey, I'm going to purchase some uh, the, the brass engine that might be more, definitely is more expensive and more exclusive that uh, otherwise wouldn't have happened in the past. So because the way the market is and with younger people buying trains, it allows things to evolve. And for those of us that are older to say, hey, we're going to step up our game a little bit. And, and then you have companies like, Sunset Third Rail that are going to hopefully be continuing to produce some great engines that that we're interested in purchasing. Yeah, I just started getting into Atlas engines uh, within the last year, and I've been very very happy and and uh, I would love to own a Third Rail uh, engine uh, maybe within the next couple of years because they mm-hmm. they produce some pretty spectacular looking engines. To be perfectly honest with you, they sure do. Now, speaking of spectacular engines, do you have a holy grail engine? Like something that you've been looking for, but you can't get it. I'm not saying like from from a monetary standpoint. I'm just saying you have an engine like I I want this engine. I'm going to look everywhere for this engine. And if I find it, I'm going to buy it immediately. Is there something out there that keeps eluding you? You know, that's that's tough. There's a bunch of things that I would re- a bunch of different models that I would really love to acquire at some point. And, uh, you know, I would love to have UP 844. I have a feeling that we're going to see that in a, a upcoming Lionel release again. So I hope they'll be able to get an order in on that. I would love to see a triplex with legacy. That would be amazing to go along with my Angus, which is one that I kind of always had my eye on. That I was excited about. And I was able to get this past year. So th- there's a bunch of things. It's hard to really just pin it down to one. The, you know, some of those crazy uh, Pensy engines at Q1, Q2. I'd love to snag one of those. I would really like um, my buddy Greg's 475, which is a third rail engine. I'm assuming Lionel will come out with that at some point in time. For those of you that don't know, Norfolk and Western's 475 is at Strasburg, which is not too far from where I live. So I'd love to acquire that. So at some point I'll just steal Greg's, I think, but we'll just have to get him down here with the layout and <laughs> make sure he forgets it sometime. 
that was a nice model. I can't deny that. Yeah. I think what, uh, I think what Chris is saying is, uh, Greg, uh, uh, someday you're not going to see that engine when you look over. <laughs> yeah, it might just be. It's going to get stuck in the tunnel and never come back out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that finishes up my questions. Uh, so I will pass the mic over to Matt Z and see if he has anything for you. All right, Chris, I was curious. Uh, why did you call your layout the Pennsylvania Pacific? Well, that just goes down to the fact that I'm a fan of UP and Pensy. And so I thought of, well, I need something that's going to bring in both of those. I can't just call it, you know, something in Pennsylvania and then have a bunch of UP stuff on here. So I thought Pennsylvania and Pacific, you got the alliteration with the P's and it's just basically all encompassing, right? Because you're going to have from Pennsylvania all the way out to the Pacific. I can... I can say that's the name of the railroad and I've got everything in between on here. So I can't have people be like, well, it doesn't make sense. It's not prototypical to be on your three row layout. Um, so that's, that's why that's pretty much it. It, uh, it was the alliteration piece. Whenever I try to come up with a name of something, I try to have, have that because it just flows a little bit nicer and it's an all encompassing name. Cool. All right. Ready? Uh, and I got to say, we talked about senior earlier and I think scenery and another thing that goes really well with this is structures. And there's two mm-hmm. things that you've done recently that I think make a huge difference on the layout. The first is your town. That town is fantastic. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. I'll tell you, every layout I've ever seen with a town is killer, and yours is absolutely no exception. Uh, the other one is your roundhouse. Uh, I was curious yeah. if you want to talk a little bit about that. Sure. So you know, let's start with the town first, and then we'll end with a high note there. So the town that was just, you know, I had a a yard there. It didn't just wasn't flowing. I talk about that in a video. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out. It's a a three part video that only two parts are out because I'm still working on the third installment, but I knew I wanted to use the Woodland Scenics buildings. They're just, they're so well detailed and to call them plug and play doesn't do them justice because you literally set them down and they're done. So knowing that I was going to go with something that, anybody could walk into a hobby shop and buy i needed to do i needed to make something unique and different so i decided that i would build this town build the sidewalks myself scenic them have some different areas that we can get some photos of trains but make it look really realistic and different so it wasn't just a bunch of buildings that were purchased and stacked next to one another so that was kind of that was my vision and the town continues to evolve a little bit here and there i've got a couple other ideas of some things i would like to do with it but that was just, it just creates a whole other scenic element to my layout that otherwise wasn't there because it was just the yard tracks. And and in that video, I talk about the fact that, and I'm going to speak for all of us in the O-Gage hobby, that we tend to put too much track on our layouts. Even thinking back to my uncle's layout when I was a kid, it was just, you know, it was obviously just Lionel tubular track, but there's track everywhere. And we just wanted to see how many loops and switches can we put on this layout. And so when you're thinking about scenery and getting good video and good uh, photos you don't want track everywhere you need to have land you need to have buildings uh, you need to have cars which i'm slowly getting more of because i keep getting yelled at by people that there's no cars on my layout um so that was that was the reason why i decided to go and and completely change that scene of the layout and make that investment for the roundhouse when i when i we bought this house. The first thing I did was come to the basement and measure it before we even had a contract signed. And then design this layout was designed in SCARM before we signed a contract on the home. So I knew I would come down, finish the basement. I knew how much space I'd have. And that gave me about eight months or so, six months to begin buying switches and track. So when the basement was done, I wasn't just buying it all at once. I had slowly acquired it over about six months of time. And I knew I wanted the turntable. I had purchased that right away. And then I knew I wanted a roundhouse. And so I gave myself as much room as I thought I needed. And I have about a quarter of an inch of space left. So I'm glad that I, I did what I did because it's a snug fit for the roundhouse. But that was, you know, I was looking at the Corber kits. You know, you can get the Corber roundhouse kit, which isn't a bad option. But Dennis Brennan had a plaster kit for a while. I, I think he still has it. And then there's Altoona Model Works. And so I was talking with my buddy Jason and he was in the process of ordering a roundhouse. Also, we were both looking at purchasing the one that Norm Charbonneau has, which is the Altoona Model Works kit. And so I ended up contacting Bob from Altoona Model Works. And in about a week, 
he and I went back and forth on the phone through email, developed a plan for what this would look like, what I wanted to customize it with. And, and we had it ordered. So that was March. I ordered this in March and I picked it up in September from his shop out, which is just outside of Altoona. And so Sid and I went out there for the, a day to pick it up and got to tour his layout. But the, the roundhouse itself is, it's unbelievably detailed. It's, it was a labor of love to build. It, it's quite a process and it's challenging just the geometry of the roundhouse itself. If you get an angle off, it's going to kind of mess up where your doors are, which affects when the trains come in and out. I have some little, little minor issues here and there, but the, the videos and the pictures you can get of it just speak volumes and, and it just creates a completely different dynamic when you start to build your layout up as opposed to just building it wide and long with track. I mean, you start putting buildings and, and mountains and trees and, and things like this. It just, it just makes it so much more realistic. So that was a, an awesome addition. I love it. I, I actually am already looking forward to the next Altoon Model Works building that I've just ordered. And I'm looking forward to, in time, expanding this layout and getting another roundhouse that's even bigger and adding that on. Because it was a fun process. It's challenging. And the, the payout was fantastic. And I, I love the feedback from people that have come to see it and just be able to peer inside the windows. And it, it just really sucks you in and makes you, look, makes you feel like you're in this completely different reality. That's awesome. You know, I remember when you first posted the pictures of the, uh, was your GS4, when mm-hmm. you post a picture of that, I'd, uh, we go back to the real life photos. I, I would have sworn that was a real picture. If, if yeah. I didn't know that was your layout, it was really fantastic. And the detail work inside that brown house is just killer. You did a fantastic job. Love Thank it, you. Dude. Yeah. And that'll continue to evolve as I get more little, you know, detail parts and things like that. It's, it's endless. You know, you go onto those, some of those websites to buy some detail parts and it's like, Oh, it's only $3. But then the next thing you know, you've got 30 things in your cart at $3. You're like, Oh, I can't pull this off. Uh, so it's, it's a, buying a couple of things a month, you know, here and there, some small things, and it'll just continue to evolve. We'll add more details and junk to the back of a roundhouse and ropes to the inside and just make it more and more realistic as time goes on. So it'll be a, it's one of those things, just like the layout's never quite done, that that building will never be quite done. We'll continue to add more stuff to it. Like it's an operating roundhouse. Nice. I know I have the, uh, pros engine house, the, uh, small structure. And yeah. that one, I'm starting to look at detailing it too. And it's like, man, all these little pieces, parts, it's like, my God, I'll be here forever in a day. But it's like, <laughs> hey, that's the fun of it. Exactly. That's it, man. It's all about that process. And you know, I talk a lot with people that I work in, work with about the plan of rushing to the end. And I think that we typically get into this habit as humans of saying, okay, it's Sunday night. Boy, I can't wait till Friday. I hope this week goes fast when we get to the weekend. And as in education, which is the field that I'm in, as I mentioned before, you know, we get in September. It's like, man, I hope Thanksgiving gets here quick. Man, I hope Christmas gets here quick. Man, I hope June gets here quick. And the next thing you know, it's the end of the year. And what have you accomplished? Uh, have you done everything that you needed to do? Did we enjoy the time that we had? And then what happens? You're a year older, right? You're a week older. You're a day older. And did you truly enjoy the process of your day and and, and not take it for granted of all those little moments? and as a father of a six-year-old and a three-year-old, I've done my best over the last couple of years to slow down and so and not rush to the end. Because building those things, like you said, is the, is the fun. That's the release. That's the process. And if you rush, you're going to make mistakes and regret it later. So really just trying to slow down, finding time that I can work on these things where I'm not stressed out. So if my family's in bed on a Friday night, I'll come down here and work for a couple hours. And I have no distractions and I can just focus on the project and put everything I need to into it without rushing. Cause uh, yeah, if you, if you, you're rushing to get done, nothing, you're not going to be happy at the end product. So trust the process and enjoy the process is something that I try to remember, remind myself whenever I'm down here working on the layout and then just turn that back into everything else in life. Gotcha. I think that's uh, very well said. And then I had uh, one last one. We're going to go from scenery to track. Mm-hmm. Uh, why did you use the track system? First of all, what track system do you use and why did you pick it? Sure. Uh, I have Gargrave's track. And so when I had my previous layout, I had a bunch of Lionel tubular stuff. And I started with that and then quickly switched to the Gargrave's track because the flex track provided me with a lot of flexibility that I needed on that layout. And 
I, I liked the way it looked. It looked a lot better than the Lionel Tubular stuff did. I did not uh, really know of Fast Track at the time just because of getting thrown back into the hobby. And Atlas Track was just out of my price range. I think at the time, Atlas Track was $12 a section compared to $7 for Gargraves. So it just didn't make fiscal sense for me to go with Atlas. So that's why I went with Gargraves. And then raw switches were just, you know, again, searching the forums and things like that. They seemed like the best choice. So I have Gargraves Track, raw switches. Um, on this layout, I ended up going with Ross Curves. They have the little, you know, little nails and things like that. So they look a little bit nicer. Uh, so I, I decided to go with those instead of the Gargraves. And then in the yard area, the roundhouse and the new whisker tracks, they are Atlas because the turntable is a Millhouse River Studios turntable. And the bridge on that has Atlas tracks. So to, to just make it look a little bit nicer, uh, make it look a little bit more uniform and ha- help those tracks line up. I switched out all of the whisker tracks with Atlas track when I installed the, the roundhouse. So there's a little of everything on there, but it's mostly Gargraves with Ross. Cool. All and right. that was just because of cost. Really. There, there's fast oh, yeah. track in the tunnels, right? <laughs> no, it's actually just, it's actually, that's actually old. That, that is old Gargrave. That is stuff that I purchased oh, on is. the forum. Yeah. Awesome. There was a, a guy who had a YouTube channel that many people have probably seen called laid off sick was his channel. He had an yep. awesome oh, yeah. detailed two or three rail scale layout. I think it was at his dad's house and he was moving and selling a bunch of stuff. So on my layout is a bunch of his old track that uh, actually the little, um, industry spur by my town there's a kd uncoupling track that's one of his tracks uh that, that i always tell people like you remember laid off six layout there's one of his tracks right there because i bought a bunch from him when he was moving and tearing his layout down that's cool that's an interesting story yeah all right i think that's all i have uh, johnny take it away all righty so kind of piggybacking off what was said earlier so you talked about your your kind of your family connection how it was passed down and something that you brought you uh you've taken up as well mm-hmm. uh, on your youtube channel you've mentioned this here on the podcast as well um you've got you got kids and i know you made a uh, layout for for your kids and i got to kind of when we were at york got a chance to kind of see how passionate your son was about the hobby. Uh, he's He's got quite quite the flame in his eyes for trains. I was wondering if you could kind of share how you got him into it and how he's been enjoying not only the aspect of having such a wonderful layout at his disposal, but to uh, see you do videos as well. Yeah. So he is I just, you know, so my son, Miles, is he'll be three here soon. And, and so he grew up, every, you know, coming down to the basement and seeing trains. It's just kind of the way life is for him. It's all he knows. So he will always, you know, at nighttime, you know, ask to come down and see the trains run and we'll come down and run on them. And he and my daughter have like the Thomas and Percy uh, Lion Chief trains and they would always want to run them on the big layout. So I decided I'm going to build them a little train table, which I I did did a video on and and they have one they can run their trains. And now they have some other Lion Chief sets, but they still want to see the big trains run. So for him, it was just a natural, you know, this is what we do. We run trains in the basement and and for my daughter, she's kind of grown into it a little bit more. She enjoys coming down here and using the legacy remote. She's learning how to do that a little bit more and share it with her friends uh, that are in the neighborhood and things like that. So for, for Miles, it's just going to be part of his life. And, and if he doesn't enjoy it when he gets older, that's fine. He seems to enjoy it now. And I really enjoy sharing sharing the hobby with him. It's it's you know one of the best parts about being a father, sharing something with your kids that, that you enjoy and and so it's been fun. Uh, he loves coming down here when there's other people and, and pointing and talking about the trains and running back and forth and seeing it go around the layout. So it's just fun to watch him enjoy it. Real quick, piggybacking off of this, you know, uh, for me, it's my brothers. You know, they, the first, I, I went over to my grandparents' place not too long ago and I sat down to have dinner and they were just wrapping up, but I just got there. So I, I had what they were eating and, I wasn't even at my chair yet. The first thing my uh, little, little older brother wanted to do was he wanted to go run trains. And it's like, to me, that's huge. You know, to know that, you know, there's people in your life, you know, be it son, brother, whatever it be, that are going to carry the torch, you know, with them, at least for right now. 
I mean, you know, when I watch them, you know, interact with the trains, I see myself when I was their age and it just, it, it's heartwarming to see that it really is. It's, it's a great feeling for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. And when we were at your place, Chris, I think it, this was probably my favorite memory of the night when we were all running trains after York together. Um, when your son came downstairs and he saw all these guys running trains, having fun talking trains, and he he saw all these trains he's never seen before, and he is pointing at them. He's he's got this big smile on his face, and he's so excited. And that 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 was just heartwarming to see. I think my favorite aspect had to be the fact that um, I was getting shots for the the York vlog because uh, I want to showcase the the running session we had that night, and I I asked your son for help. And he, I, I asked him, you know, oh, well, what's your favorite spots and all that stuff. And I swear, I think he knows your layout and all the scenic spots better than you do sometimes. Because he, he was <laughs> grabbing the tripod, leading me around, pointing to his favorite scenes. And he has, he has a good eye for the camera. Um, yeah. but you can, you can hear him being excited in the background. And that was, that was probably the most heartwarming part of the night for me. Yeah, he well, you know, he's got the same perspective as where the camera tripod height is too. So he can he's right at that eye level. You know, you think for for us as adults, we're staring down at this thing, and for him, he's staring at them like he's a scale figure on on the layout itself. So I I would love to see it through his eyes. It's fun just to hear the excitement, and I've gotten to the point when I'm making videos that if he comes down in the basement, I think I was I think I was doing the town video when I was up on the layout and he came down and asked me what I was doing. And I was just like, I'm just leaving that in there. Cause that's the reality of trying to get these things done. Uh, it's kind of like Instagram versus reality, you know, mm -hmm. side by sides. It's like, here it is. You know, you, kids are asking you what you're doing. They want to come down and play. And sometimes you just got to stop what you're doing and give them some attention, but it's fun uh, watching him get excited about it and, and wanting to run the trains and things like that, just to make sure they don't run into one another. So <laughs> Hey, maybe, maybe it'd be a cool idea to see uh see let him lead a video for your channel in yeah, the future i'm sure he will one day yeah <laughs> well that's that's great um so kind of kind of going back to your to your collection a little bit here um i asked uh i asked rbp the same question i want to ask you this what consists do you tend to just you see yourself gravitating towards all the time that is always a a, a uh a constant train or passenger set or freight set that's always in the layout that you just can't help but run all the time. Which one is one of your, your favorites to run all the time? Yeah, that's, that's probably the cold drag. I would say if you asked me that question six months ago, it'd probably be my Atlas reefer train, which now has some MTH reefers in it. And it's going to have a lot more here once these pre-orders finally start coming in. But I've put that away recently. I, I got some storage containers and put the reefers away and, and now it's just been the cold drag. That's really never come off the layout. It's continued to build. So that would probably be the standard, the standard regular consist that you'll see on there's the Pensy coal cars with a, a couple box cars on it as well, just getting pulled by the M1 or some other non Pensy engine that's on the layout. So that would that would have to be it. So we're gonna see a, a daylight cold drag, right, Chris? You might see that, yeah. <laughs> just, just, just to just to get under the skin of some of those daylight foamers out there. Tonight. Yeah, those weird daylight foamers. Can, I can never relate to those guys. No, no. Yeah. Who, who are them? Good thing there isn't any on this podcast. Oh yeah, goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> What's a daylight? I don't know. Some kind of train or something. I don't know. Maybe it's a yeah, bus. right. <laughs> But um, once again, touching back on on more layout questions for you here, Chris. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned you had like a childhood layout that you have very fond memories of. And yeah. it's something that I see some people do and some people don't do. So I'm curious if you're in this camp here. Were there any aspects of the childhood layout that you wanted to pay homage to or that you brought over to your personal layout when you got older? Yeah, none at all, actually. Really? We Yeah, so my childhood layout, we had built – a bunch of sheets of plywood up on you know, two by fours and had two loops of track. One went up through a mountain that we never finished. We never ended up scenicing it because my parents ended up finishing the basement when I was in seventh grade and we tore the layout down and that was really the end of it. So it was only up for about two years. We tried to get some things done, but we could never, we never really got the commitment to, to build the mountain and do the scenery work. So it was a lot of just carpet layout for me in my room. So I'd pull the trains out every now and again and have them up for a week and then put the trip, build some track plan and then they'd go back in the box and shoved into the closet. The train would go back up onto the shelf. And that was really, that was my childhood. There wasn't a big elaborate layout that I had as a child. 
So I, there was no, never working through the process of building the layout and doing any scenery work. I didn't do scenery work until I was 26 and building that layout in my last house that I've got a couple clips of in, in one of my videos a while ago. I'll have to do a, just a video of all those clips and talk about that layout. But so it's been all the work that I've done on the layout I've learned since 2015, really. I mean, there was not much that I, I knew and learned growing up because I just didn't have that experience, unfortunately. Gotcha, gotcha. That's considering that you you went head first into the the world of super of detailing and, and scale mm-hmm. and and all that. It's it's quite impressive to see how far you've come, and it, it definitely serves as an inspiration to a lot of us who are getting back into the hobby and want to pursue that same path as well to see um, what's what's possible if you really put your mind and time and skills towards it. So that's really cool. Sure, I think I don't know if it's part of just being. I don't know if it's some sort of narcissism, but when I go into something. I like to do, I, I want to be the best at whatever it is. So when I'm doing any of my hobbies, really. So if I have my wood shop, if I'm working on a project, I want to make sure I've got the tools that are going to help me and the skills to build the best, whatever it is that I'm building. Or if it's down here, you know, I'm putting my time into something. It's going to be the best out there. That's kind of just my motivation. And it's not, I'm not, I'm not the best. I'm not close. I don't think, but I, it's just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, if I'm going in, I'm going all in. So that's, that, that was kind of my motivation in 2015 when I got into this hobby. It's like, Hey, let's go ahead first and let's do it. We're going to go all out and learn the tricks and do whatever we need to do to make this as good as we possibly can. <laughs> that that's that is a really good mentality though just just strive to be the best that you can be and accomplish the best that you can do that that's very very good mentality there mm-hmm. and i expect that when uh, we come back and visit you again this uh this fall that you have the the best pizza as well right yeah we'll see <laughs> no no anchovies for for mr matt z over there though no oh, come on anchovies come on bro <laughs> all right burn em. <laughs> let's boot him from the park burn em. Burn them. <laughs> no. <laughs> so uh, my last question for tonight that I kind of want to put in here tonight would be you have really embraced not only the social media aspect of things, but the getting the chance to meet people face to face. So um, that'd be with you, with RBP Chris and RJ have gone out there and met people at hobby shops and done your own meetups. And that's something that I think is really, really important to kind of make sure that people understand that the social media people, the influence aren't influencers, aren't just, you know, people on the screen that, that we're, we're real people too. And that we want to meet the folks that watch your content and have that genuine connection. Um, what has that experience been like for you? Are there any stories that you, that you or memories that you hold near and dear to your heart since you got to meet so many people? Yeah, I think for, for us, I mean, that just spurred that, that just kind of came on, uh, as an accident, RJ, Sid, and I were talking after York, and we're like, "Hey, we want to go down to a hobby shop in Virginia that we that we had gone to at the York show, and and that was down in Southern Virginia." And we decided, "Hey, when we come back, we're going to stop at one more." And we were sitting at lunch, and we had two shops on Google that we wanted to stop at, and we ended up picking one because they had a blue comment set in the picture on on Instagram or on um, on Google, and that ended up being toy trains and collectibles which is where we've gone a couple of different times and done some videos of. And it's funny because the, the owner of toy trains and collectibles is the president of the Eastern PCA. He's become a very good friend of, of ours because uh, he just took really good care of us when we were there and, and just meeting people. So that gave us an opportunity to go back and just say, Hey, we're going, we're going to go down to the shop and hang out for a little bit, and maybe buy some things. And I, I would end up selling some things while I was there and placing our pre-orders and whatnot, but that, that brought some other people out. And it was, it was really neat to see families come out and young kids that know who we were, you know, it's a humbling experience. I don't see myself as, you know, an influencer or anything. I'm just a, a guy who enjoys this hobby that wants to put it out there for others to learn something and to have families come up and say, Hey, you know, so-and-so is kind of shy, but they want to say hi, or they want to have a picture with you. Is, is kind of a situation I never thought that I'd be in. I, I love it. It's great. It's, it's fun being at York and having people walk up and say hi, uh, you know, maybe make some comments about the content and the layout and, and just ask kind of what's going on and just get to know some people. There's, there's people that are just around the corner that you don't know that watch your content and are in the same hobby and, and you just need a moment to connect with them and, and that can create something 
uh, a connection to to a friendship and, and some collaboration and more inspiration for your own layout and hobby. So we've gotten to meet a few people by doing some of those meetups and 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 that will hopefully only continue to grow. We intend on going back down to to toy trains and collectibles many times as as we can kind of moving forward. It's easier for Sid and RJ and RBP because they're in the area. For me, it's about a three hour drive to get down there and back. So it's a full day adventure, which is tough to do on a weekend with your family. So uh, I'll get down there as much as I can, but it's been a lot of fun meeting people. That's what this is. Uh, this, that's what this has become all about, right? We've developed these layouts. We continue to let them evolve, but it's like I said, it's about interacting with fans and live streaming and live premiering has allowed us to interact with fans. And now that we're hopefully through the, the worst of COVID and, and we're able to interact more in person with people, it's just really humbling to meet people and have them come up to you and say that they're a fan of what you do. And that just motivates me even more to to make this the best layout I can and, and produce the best content that is going to be friendly for, for viewers of, of all ages and motivate more people to be part of the hobby and, and part of the community. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and I completely agree with you there. Um, well, we have our great uh, layouts and our collections and, you know, it's a very social hobby. It's one where we like to share what we have and, and we love to talk trains. Um, I remember like I, maybe a year or two ago, I had absolutely nobody to talk to. Uh, and I had these people on YouTube I'd watch and getting a chance to meet them and getting a chance to have friends in the hobby who actually understand, you know, your crazy drive to buy all these trains and, and have this collection. It's, it's really great. And when you get to meet other like-minded people and make those friendships, it just makes the hobby oh so much more enjoyable. And I, I really admire what you you guys do when you have your meetups and getting the chance to have your fans to to reach out and talk with them as well. I, I hope that's something that uh, us here at the podcast that we can do hopefully at some point sooner than later. Yeah, for sure, man. It's been it's just been a wild ride. It's been great to connect with people and and know that you're not alone in the hobby. Like you said, that's been the the biggest change I think of the last. 12 months. I think, uh, Matt Z, you got something, buddy? Yeah, I, I just wanted to piggyback off of that and basically say that, you know, it's this is huge to, to know that there's people that, like I said, you're not alone. There's people, you know, younger, older, your age, whatever it may be, that are in the hobby. You guys enjoy it. You guys can communicate with it. You know, like we'll be on calls, you know, three, four, five, however long, you know, many hours. And we just talk trains, you know, we have fun, you know, we, we buy and sell things on the calls because, you know, that's what we do. And uh, it, it's, it's great to know that you are not alone. And, you know, like Chris was saying earlier with the, you know, getting to meet people, meet and greets and stuff. I mean, it just, it's, it's great to know that that's a thing and you can do that if mm-hmm. you want to, you know, maybe, maybe the term fangirling is a thing for this. I don't know, but it, it's great to know that it can be done when and if it's needed and it's just fantastic to know that yeah i think one of the things that that we've learned with with this hobby is traditionally you'd have your train clubs of people that are in the same region would get together they have maybe a club layout and or modular club layout and they get together and run trains on that and that was how people would bond through this hobby and what what i've learned is that through youtube is we've been able to kind of create our own club that stretches across most of the country at this point with, with people that we're able to connect with on a nightly basis. If we want to uh, daily through discord and then through our videos and, and things like that. And you know, we talk about like, you know, making the world flat, it's really brought us together and made, made us a lot closer and, and allowed us to just connect with so many more people. So it's been, it's been great. It's been, it's, it's just amazing how much this has changed in 12 months to think that, you know, if I, if I think back to February of last year, I wasn't really talking to many people uh, at all until, you know, I, I kind of got on discord and connected with some others. And heck, I mean, if we think about it, RBP was starting his channel in February of last year and look where he is today. So it's, it's changed quite a bit in the last 12 months. If you told me like two years ago, I was going to meet like, have 20 new friends, like probably three or four really close, good buddies. I would have said, yeah, you're full of it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just, just through the, just through the O scale model railroading hobby, like get whatever. And, uh, I I've been absolutely blown away. Uh, and, and 
the reason why, why I keep going in this hobby is because I have awesome friends uh, that are there to, you know, help me get through things. Uh, you know, uh, hey, what should I buy? What should I not buy? Um, hey, can you come over and, you know, you know, help me run this and test this out? And what do you guys think of this? Uh, so it's been a, it's been a fantastic ride. And, um, you know, I look forward to York this fall being there once already, uh, was just mind blowing and going back is going to be even better. I know it. So yeah, it's it's been, been awesome so far. Well, does anybody have anything else or Chris, did you have any final thoughts? No, I just, you know, I think I've, I've talked for quite a bit on here and I can go on for hours and hours so i don't want to keep people too long but i I, again i just appreciate folks that watch the content and and like the channel and i hope to see some people at york i'll be heading there uh, this april for spring york and i'll be there again god willing in the fall so it's going to be another great year in the hobby and if you're out there and just give me a follow give me a shoot me an email if you have questions about anything i'm happy to help Again, the, the purpose of me getting out there on YouTube was just to help others get into the hobby and be able to do things that maybe they, they just don't know how to accomplish. So I'm happy to help if I can. Yeah. And Chris, uh, we really appreciate you coming on uh, and just kind of sharing some of your uh, background information and, you know, uh, just things about you in general. And we would love to have you back on, yeah. um, you know, you know, we did the interview today, but we would love to have you back on maybe for a catalog show. We really value your input on things and uh, just, uh, you know, you've been a great guest so far tonight. Oh, thank you. No, it'd be great. Just let me know when. Happy to join. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, does uh, Johnny or Matt, do you guys have any closing uh, thoughts? I, uh, I just think this is a fantastic interview. And uh, Chris, we might have to maybe do a scenery one and have you back on. There you go. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Thank uh, you, Chris. That's, that's not good. Yeah, thank you for being on, dude. We uh, yeah. really appreciate you joining us uh, and telling us all your great stories. And you definitely being a really big inspiration tonight to not only us, to a bunch of, bunch of folks tonight as well. So thank you again. Thank you. And uh, as a guest, we want to make sure that people can find you out there in the internets. So, Chris, where can people find you on social media? Sure. So you can find me on YouTube under uh chris's trains and things and then i'm also on instagram which is you can search chris's trains and things but the handle is actually chris mon trains so c-h-r-i-s-m-o-n trains so the those are the two social media platforms i'm on i'm not on facebook anymore so find me there and i'm also on the matt matt discord server so if you're not on that and you want to chat you can jump on there and find me there as well and uh, johnny where can people find you sir uh, you can find me on YouTube at Audemus. That's A-U-D-A-M-U-S. You can find me there screaming at inav- inanimate objects, getting hit in the face with boxes. Maybe I'll talk about trains. You can also find me on Instagram, where I'm significantly more active on there. And you can also find me on Facebook at Audemus underscore trains for both Instagram and Facebook. Last but not least, you can find me on the Matt and Matt Discord. Um, you can hit me up there. We can chat trains. We can hop in a call. And you can meet some great folks as well. Some of my favorite folks on that server are recent have been Jersey Boy and Matt's Collections. Those guys are wizards at sound stuff. So if you've heard our sound episode and want some advice, check us out on there as well. Anchovy Lover, where can people find you? Anchovy Lover. <laughs> Box <laughs> Lover. I, 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 I mean, I'll take either one. I don't really care. Box, Anchovy, whatever it is. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. You could find me on YouTube under Matt-TrainLover9943. You can also find me on Facebook under the same name. Uh, you can check out the Matt and Matt Discord. Of course, I'm on there, and I'm also on Instagram. Uh, it's it, it's trains, yes, but it's also a general hobby thing. So it's Matt's dot hobbies uh, on Instagram. So if you want to check me out, it's it, it's music, it's trains, it's a little bit of everything. But I figured I'd make it a little more public. Uh, so if you want to check me out on there, give me a follow, and I'd uh, be much appreciated. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at West Chicago Model Railroad. I'm on Facebook under the same name. And I am also on Instagram at WCMRR. So with that said, thank Chris once again. Thanks for coming on to the podcast. And I want to wish everybody a wonderful night. Take good care. Thank you. Thanks, guys.